Hi all and welcome to the webinar Dr Chekhill and Mr Hyde, task 23, which can be found on page 33 of your work booklets in the light blue box. Before we begin reading the short extract, let's remind ourselves on what has recently happened in the novella. After the brutal murder of Carew, Mr Hyde has all but disappeared. With the disappearance of Mr Hyde, Dr Jekyll has come out of solitude and returned to his old self. Unfortunately, this does not last long. Only two months after return to normal, Jekyll refuses to see his friend Utterson. Alarmed, Utterson visits his friend Dr Lanyon, hoping for some comfort. However, Dr Lanyon is not well. He is extremely ill and physically changed, appearing disturbed by something terrifying. When Utterson attempts to talk to Lanyon about Jekyll's unusual behaviour, he refuses to discuss the matter, stating Jekyll is good as dead to him. Confused, Utterson attempts to reach out to Jekyll again, who confirms Lanyon's earlier statement that they will never see each other again. This leaves Utterson thoroughly confused and struggling with this unsettling mystery surrounding all this odd behaviour. So why is this behaviour odd? Well, one thing we can think about is the fact that Lanyon and Jekyll, as far as Utterson was aware, were good friends and colleagues who um, had had a disagreement about their scientific practices but were still friends and now suddenly they're no longer friends and not talking. The beginning of our extract is two weeks later. Whilst we read the extract, I want you to consider how mystery is further created by Lanyon's unusual request of Utterson and how is this achieved. A week afterwards, Dr Lanyon took to his bed, and in something less than a fortnight he was dead. The night after the funeral, at which he had been sadly affected, Utterson locked the door of his business room, and sitting there by the light of a melancholy candle, drew out and set before him an envelope, addressed by the hand and sealed with the seal of his dead friend. Private, for the hands of G. J. Utterson alone, and in case of his predeceased to be destroyed unread. So it was emphatically superscribed and the lawyer dreaded to behold the contents. I have buried one friend today, he thought. What if this should cost me another? And then he condemned the fear as a disloyalty and broke the seal. Within there was another enclosure, likewise sealed and marked upon the cover as not to be opened till the death or disappearance of Dr Henry Jekyll. Utterson could not trust his eyes. Yes, it was disappearance. Here again, as in the mad will which he had long ago restored to its author, here again were the idea of a disappearance and the name of Henry Jekyll bracketed. But in the will, that idea had sprung from the sinister suggestion of the man Hyde. It was set there of a purpose all too plain and horrible. Written by the hand of Lanyon, what should it mean? A great curiosity came on the trustee to disregard the prohibition and dive at once to the bottom of these mysteries. But professional honour and faith to his dead friend were stringent obligations, and the packet slept in the inmost corner of his private safe. So before we move on and discuss the extract in detail, I have included a glossary that just goes through some of the more complex vocabulary that um, Stevenson has used. And also we'll have a quick discussion about um, the extract itself and what happens. So as we can see, unfortunately, Dr. Lanyon has died of what we don't know, but he has left a letter to Utterson to be read alone. But when Utterson opens the letter, he finds another envelope inside the envelope, which tells him not to open the letter unless Jekyll is dead. So he chooses not to open the letter because that is what Dr Lanyon has requested of him. In regard to some of the vocabulary, when he says, then he condemned the fear as a disloyalty. So when he initially sees the letter, he begins to wonder what could be inside and worries that it might be something to do with Jekyll. This is a natural assumption to make, considering he knows Utterson and Jekyll no longer talk to each other. So may no, Lanyon and Jekyll no longer talk to each other. So maybe Lanyon has put something inside the letter about Jekyll. So he's worried, but then he decides, no, don't be silly. Trusty, he is the trustee of the letter, because it's been entrusted to him. And when he says disregard the prohibition, he's thinking about... Ignoring the rules set out by Lanyon and just reading the letter, but he chooses not to. So, Lanyon has died very suddenly, only weeks before he was healthy and in good spirits. He leaves Utterson a letter that may explain the mystery of his death. 
We don't know how Lanyon has died and what of, but as readers we can assume it has something to do with whatever disturbed him so greatly it made him physically ill. After his death, Utterson has received a letter from Dr Lanyon, but what is mysterious about this letter? Let's look back at the text. An envelope addressed by the hand and sealed with the seal of his dead friend, private, for the hands of G.J. Utterson alone, and in case of his predecease, to be destroyed unread. As you can probably imagine, Utterson is already a little concerned as to why his friend felt the need to send him a letter in the first place, considering he visited him just a few weeks earlier. Adding to this is the use of private and alone in capital letters, which emphasise that Lanyon does not want anyone but Utterson to read the letter. Why can't anyone else see its contents? Finally, Lanyon has made it clear that if Utterson is dead before him, the letter must be destroyed unread. It's interesting that Lanyon may think it possible that Utterson could have died before him, considering how ill Lanyon was. So Lanyon, we assume, wrote this letter on his deathbed, in, in the throes of death. So the fact that he still thinks it's possible that Utterson could have died before him is interesting. Did he think something might have happened to Utterson? Did he think Utterson was in danger? When presented with this information, Utterson thinks, I have buried one friend today, he thought. What if this cost me another? And then he condemned the fear of his, as a disloyalty and broke the seal. So before he opened the first envelope, he already had suspicions that this may have something to do with Jekyll, but immediately is crossed with himself for thinking ill of his friend. He does not want to be disloyal to his friend Jekyll by assuming it has something to do with him, and he also wants to be loyal to Lanyon by opening the envelope. But when Mr Utterson opens the envelope, he finds another envelope inside. What makes this even stranger is the fact that this envelope within an envelope also says not to be opened till the death or disappearance of Dr Henry Jekyll. Utterson could not trust his eyes. Why does Dr Lanyon not want this letter to be opened unless Dr Jekyll is dead or disappeared? Also, why does he think Dr Jekyll may, may die or disappear? Die is one thing, but disappear? This is reminiscent to the will laid out by Dr Jekyll himself in Chapter 2, where he makes it clear that if he dies or disappears, Mr Hyde inherits his property and estate. So Utterson is alarmed. He's like, why are my friends all talking about you disappearing and dying? And if you disappear and die, Mr Hyde, who I now know is a murderer because he murdered Carew, inherits everything. So he's worried. This letter raises many questions for the reader and is gripping in its use of precise information with little explanation. Dr Lanyon has made his request very clear, but we do not know why. We infer it may be safer for Utterson to not read the letter until Jekyll is dead or disappeared. Maybe... Dr. Lanyon's protecting from the truth. We'll, we don't know. We haven't read the letter yet. But his instructions are clear. Explanation is not. That being said, why does Utterson not read the letter? As readers, we are very confused and want to know the answers within the mysterious letter. But Utterson chooses not to relieve his sense of curiosity. Why? Okay? As humans, we're naturally curious. We want to know things. But he says, no, I will not read this letter. So in the extract it says, what should it mean? A great curiosity came on the trustee to disregard the prohibition and dive at once to the bottom of these mysteries, but professional honour and faith to his dead friend were stringent obligations. So he actually admits that he's very curious and thinks about disregarding the rules, but then thinks, no. So he decides not to open the letter because of professional honour and faith to his friend. What does he mean by professional honour? Remember, Utterson is a lawyer. Acting as a lawyer, it is his duty to follow his client's wishes. So professional honour prevents him from breaking that code of conduct and reading the letter. He also mentions faith to his dead friend. He trusts that his friends know what knows what he's doing and so follows his orders, despite wanting to know what is going on. Contextually, Victorian gentlemen were upstanding citizens who were loyal to their friends and colleagues. This is ingrained within Utterson's character. He is a reliable, honourable Victorian gentleman who is loyal to his friends, which is why they trust him with their letters and wills. So, what do you think? Is it a wise decision that Utterson decides to follow his dead friend's requests and not open the letter? It is clear that Lanyon knows something about Jekyll and suspects Jekyll may die or disappear. Does Utterson not also have a duty in caring for his friend Jekyll by ensuring whatever is in Lanyon's letter does not come to fruition? Or is he doing the right thing by following his requests? Maybe Lanyon is protecting Utterson from some monstrous secret which would put Utterson at risk if he were to know. 
Have a go at answering the three questions yourselves. If you have any trouble with understanding the extract, please do not hesitate to email your teachers for advice and guidance. After all, this is what we are here for. Have a great rest of the day.